What is up YouTube, Ultimalock here, and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to do internal battery repair on your Game Boy games without losing your save data. So this is a very, very, very awesome process because one, this is probably the best method to do so. I would not recommend going off and setting up a dummy battery because I've personally done that before and the wire was bad, which ended up screwing it up because if one of the wires are bad out of the two, then guess what happens? All your save data is gone. Uh, also, if the internal battery is dead, which on both methods would actually go off and ruin the save file, but there's just a lot of variables with doing it that way. This method, we're gonna be actually going off and doing it with just the basic supplies that uh, you need. You need to either have a Game Boy Advance or Game Boy uh, SP. Now, of course, you could use a Retron 5 to do that. I don't use a Retron 5 to back up my save files majority of the time. I do it for my Super Nintendo games just to test the cartridges out. But if I'm actually caring about the cartridge, uh, there are other ways of doing so to make sure that you actually save your data instead of going off and relying on something that could potentially fail. But uh, yeah, let's get started. So first things first, you're gonna need the game. You're gonna need a 3.8 security bit. You're gonna need a CR2025 battery. Uh, Game Boy SP or Game Boy Advance. Highly recommend Game Boy Advance. Game Boy SP, it's much, much more difficult to do it with. But let's take this apart. And here we go. As you can see here, it has the original battery in it, a Nintendo battery. Now, these batteries have a lifespan of 8 to 12 years. This game is way overdue for a battery change. Now, it will still hold a save file, right? But if you were to go off and play through this game, it's very, very, very likely, if not almost 100% going to happen, where the save data will just magically erase after a given point in time. And that's because of the fact that it's holding a charge. Think of like a, uh, just think of like a remote control, right? You could have a remote control for your TV and it works once or twice and then it completely dies. And then you set it aside for like four to five hours and it'll work again once or twice. It's kind of similar with the Game Boy games. They'll hold a charge for much longer than their lifespan, but once they're past their lifespan, once you play them for a given set of time, it's almost inevitable that they're going to go off and erase their data. For example, I remember when I was in like, the seventh grade and they had like a Super Nintendo uh, console at the rec center and that one had a Super Mario World that just always kept them resetting and now I know since I actually do battery repair sometimes that yeah the battery was dead in it the console wasn't messed up the game wasn't messed up it was just a dead battery and that was when I was in the seventh grade okay so uh yeah let's get this started uh, first we're gonna be going off and using the Game Boy Advance because this is I, I prefer using the Game Boy Advance we're gonna put the game in, right, without the lid on top, so it's gonna be exposing the battery. And we're gonna turn on the game. Turn this down. And I'm gonna be showing you guys, and yes, this is a LED modded one, or a backlight modded. Okay. Continue. Here are the Pokemon right here. This way you can tell if uh, I edited the video. Obviously, I guess you wouldn't really be able to tell with that, but Killer, Kraid, Ryoku, blah, blah, blah. Essentially, this is what it is. Now, the important thing that you understand is that we're gonna be soldering this battery while the Game Boy is on, and then we're gonna be saving a game afterwards. If you basically turn off the, if you do everything you see in this video, right? and then you forget to save, you're still gonna lose your save file. The important thing is you're gonna be removing your Game Boy game, or removing the battery while the system is on. So all save data will be erased the second you do that. But the game is still on, so it's not gonna go off, and you're not gonna lose any progress as long as you save again. So that's the important part, right? So let's turn on the soldering iron, which I should have had on this entire time and let me get the solder and everything ready. I actually wasn't thinking about turning it on. Now I wanna edit the video, but now I don't wanna edit because then everyone's gonna be like, oh dude, he edited the video. But yeah, you can use a Retron to back up your save files. I don't recommend it because I had a near perfect Pokemon Red. It was either Pokemon Red or Pokemon Crystal, I can't remember, but I had a near perfect one. And then I went off and did the battery repair and all my data was erased and I was super pissed because everything was legitimately done. 
I had like, was it five or six shinies that I legitimately hunted for? Yeah, never, never again. I'm not gonna trust that. If you don't care about your save data, then you should just use a Retron because this is a little bit more of an annoying process. But if you do care very much so about your save data, which I'm sure a majority of the people who are watching this do, uh, you're going to want to use this method. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be desoldering it while it's live and it's going to be a little bit annoying. Uh, you don't have to have the battery pack off. Again, I just don't have a battery pack. So that's the reason for that. And I'm going to be tilting it this way because it will just be easier for me. Let's see if we can actually zoom in a little more. There we go. Now, this should be hot enough. Okay. I'm hoping I had the right solder tip on. Well, I had like the small solder tip, but I'm hoping this solder tip will actually uh, get hot enough to where it will loosen it. Or I might have to switch. Nope, did it. Sometimes these Game Boy game batteries can be very, very, very annoying when it comes to that. I've had it where I've had I had the uh, the big solder tip held on for like three or four I shouldn't say minutes but like for like ten seconds which feels like three or four so, um, minutes just to get the solder pad hit uh, heat it up enough to where I could remove the battery. All right, now the battery's been removed. Just show you guys that the game is still on. The game is still on, right? And again, the game doesn't need the battery uh, in order to function. Obviously you can remove this battery and just play the game, but once you go off and save, the battery is just gonna be dead, so it's not gonna really work out too well. Now, I am almost 100% sure. Actually, I shouldn't say almost, I am 100% sure. I'm gonna be really pissed if I'm wrong, <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it goes like this. But what I'm going to do beforehand is I'm going to add more solder to make it much, much more easier do this. You do not want to bump the tips of the plastic because the soldering iron right here will melt through it like butter. Okay. Now, we just gotta hope that this battery is good. Um, you could test it with like a volt tester or something along those lines, but I don't have one of those, so I'm just going to be hoping it is. Okay. Be very careful with the soldering iron to make sure you, you don't hit your fingers when you're doing this because this is obviously a very delicate process and also you don't want to get third degree burns on your, your finger. That really, really sucks. All right, so now that we've soldered in the battery, right? As you can see here, I have to be super careful not to bump the uh, back where the batteries are because I don't want to knock it out. But now that we've soldered in the new battery, oh my gosh, camera, focus. Okay, whatever, you guys, you guys see that it's there. Okay, we're gonna save. Okay, I'm gonna save again, just to make sure. Uh, yeah. All right, go ahead and turn it off. We're gonna remove the cartridge, just to make sure I'm not doing any funny business. Right, put it back in. We're gonna see 
if it works. Continue, mic two, and it works. So uh, yeah, pretty simple guys. It's not hard. Uh, it's just something that you just gotta get used to doing. I would say on a scale of one to 10 in difficulty, it's really about a four. Like it's as, it's as hard as doing it with a regular battery. You just gotta make sure that you don't nick the edges right here because this right here melts a lot. When it comes to here, it, it's very, very simple. Right here at the very bottom one, or I should say the pause or the negative. Yeah, I guess that is the negative. The negative uh, tab, it's it's very, very annoying because if your soldering iron just tips this a little bit, it's, it'll get screwy. Uh, my soldering iron right here, if I can show you guys. Uh, there we go. It has a very fine tip. See if I can just auto focus on the soldering iron right there. There we go. Uh, it has a very fine tip on it, so I can switch out to a fine one to a thick one. Whereas if you just have a really thick one, you're gonna have a very, very, very difficult time uh, going off and soldering a new battery in. But uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure to comment and subscribe. Uh, this is something for people who are actually wanting to make sure that they have their save data uh, preserved for a much longer time. Now, if you do use a Game Boy SP, the reason why it's not preferred is because this is how it is on a Game Boy SP. Actually, it's not that bad. I thought it was actually gonna be much worse than that. You could use a Game Boy SP, but it's, I don't know. It actually might stick out more on the Game Boy SP than the uh, Game Boy Advance. Hmm, we're learning stuff this video. Yeah, it's about the same. So uh, it's really up to your preference.